We are taking an in-depth look at a growing problem in Buffalo and across the country. It's been a violent summer so far since just the beginning of this month. The start of July, 29 people have been shot in Buffalo. That includes three year old Shaquelle Walker Jr. who died last Friday. He was shot watching fireworks on Donovan Drive earlier in the week. So how does the community move forward? This morning we're joined by Pastor James Giles, president of the Back to Basics Ministries about how to address gun violence in the city of Buffalo. Pastor Giles, good morning to you. Thanks good, for being with us. Good morning. Good morning. I spoke with you a few months ago, back in November, about this issue in particular, the violence. Mm -hmm. And I think what it's hard for people to understand who perhaps don't live in the city and live in the suburbs or wherever else in western New York about this one area in particular that it's not just Buffalo, this affects all urban areas. Urban communities across this country suffer from the same problem. Uh, initially, it's always been the lack of economic development. Right. When we talk about economic development, I'm not talking about building houses up in the community. So affordable housing is something that urban communities need. However, it does not always uh, turn into material wealth for the residents. And that's what we're missing. And when you lack material wealth for the residents, then they'll create their own streams to get material wealth. And that's what develops subcultures. We have that graphic. And Jenna in the control room, if we could pull that up, I think that's really important. It's, it shows the cycle of violence. It's the economics that really drive everything here. So do you think it would be investment in certain areas or, or what terms of investment would help stop this cycle? So, so for one of the things, so we have a lack of opportunity for many of the individuals that are growing up in urban communities and because of that lack of opportunities for them. So we got to make some adjustments in the way public education is in terms of providing resources for those individuals that have barriers to learning that come from urban communities. So we have to start there. And then when you begin to do that, you got to make sure that students are transitioning into either training and or some some career goals, you know, that's going to put real dollars in their pocket. So when that happens, then you begin to flatten the curve on the trend to ha for them to have to go to the subculture or to the community to hustle, to be on the corner, posted, you know, posted up selling trees or selling some other kind of drugs. So you have to begin to address that very early. You have to give them economic opportunities and then they won't run to that. And the problem with that subculture is that it attracts all type of individuals, um, uh, individuals with mental health, mm -hmm. individuals that have this grandized uh, image of gang banging and gangster lifestyle, it attracts all those individuals, but also it attracts individual predators, right? That in that arena, they prey on people, whether it's prey on people for their goods, prey on people for their bodies, they, t they use and misuse, mm -hmm. they create rings of uh, utilizing women. So all that stuff is created in the subculture. If you begin to infuse economic development within these communities, that'll begin to stop the trend. And then the need, the violence happens to be a byproduct of bringing that type of atmosphere together. And, and Pastor Giles, I just want to be perfectly clear. You don't mean that they're selling like maple trees or pine trees. You mean no, that they're selling I mean marijuana. They're selling marijuana. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So just I'm, wanted to be crystal clear that, about that. Yes. Uh, you know, we spoke with uh, India Walton, who's a candidate for mayor, about this issue in particular. And she says it's really just about having a conversation and getting out there, meeting people where they are to really stop that violence. Let's play what she had to say when I spoke with her in our one-on-one -on -one interview. So I think it's, it's about <laughs> changing the conversation, right? These are not bad people. They are people who may not be um, making the best choices, but it's probably because they don't know they have oh, okay. other choices. So okay. again, we meet we people some. where they are. We stop punishing poverty um, and, and give people a, pa a pathway up. So she wants to stop punishing people, basically. She wants to give people a pathway up is what she says. She says these are people who may not be making the best choices, but it's probably because they don't know they have other choices. Is that something you agree with or something that you uh, think differently no, I about? I agree with that. You know, though, those are the principles that we have been pushing out since Ashley Westbrook was here and we started talking to uh, the attorney Frank Sedita about developing this ideal notion of restorative justice, right? We found out they didn't know very much about it at the 
time. This was in 2011. They didn't know very much about it. And we said, hey, we have to begin to change the trend of looking at what's happening in the community in a punitive way. And let's start addressing some of the core issues that create that. And that's what rest the restorative model looks to. It mm -hmm. looks to the restore individuals that are doing so. See, nobody behaves, and I, I'm, I'm a counselor, nobody behaves in certain ways without a very valid reason. We have to search that reason out and then begin to develop the change for that. And we will stop this flow. Uh, so yes, to that point, I, I'm, I'm very much in agree because we're about restorative practice. I want to ask you just one more question because we talk so much about the importance of the community helping and getting those tips out there and working with police. So this <coughs> Viper Task Force recently started last week. It's federal law enforcement officers working with local law enforcement. How do we change that though? I know that's a big issue. Maybe people don't feel comfortable coming forward. People are nervous to come forward. How do we change that and, and provide that conversation? Well, so that's a, a job for the district attorney's office as well as the uh, other law enforcement agencies, they have to make the community comfortable. The, the community need to know that I'm going to be safe, I'm going to mm -hmm. be protected. Oftentimes it's more mythological that you as a citizen are going to suffer reprisal if you as a witness see something and then say something. It's more a myth than it is. We have not had a lot of actual cases, you know, of mm -hmm. individuals indicting or indi when I say indicting, individual accusing and then coming, coming after people that witness and tell. We do have many cases of individuals that are in the game. And you, that's what snitching is about. You in the game, you're doing wrong, but you're gonna tell on me doing wrong. So yeah, those individuals suffer reprisals, right? And it has resonated through the community that now anybody, if they do anything, they're gonna suffer reprisal. So it, it's, it's, a, it's about educating the community, it's about reaching out to the community, it's about law enforcement being a little more intentional sure. about engaging the community, and, and they're doing that, you know, they're doing community policing, they developed a net team, and prior to COVID, you know, uh, homicide shootings were down. Right. They were down tremendously uh, if we look at the record, uh, and because we were all working together, and I always say this, it requires all of us working together. No no particular entity is going to be able to solve this problem. I think that's probably the period at the end of the sentence. Right. We all have to work together. Pastor Giles, we'll leave the conversation there, but the conversation actually continues again tomorrow. We have a full, in-depth, half-hour conversation coming up with Pastor Giles and two other leaders in our community. They're joining us for a Buffalo Strong conversation on violence in the Queen City. That's at 530 tomorrow night right here on 7ABC.